Hi, I'm Tom from Lawn Science. We're at a lawn which has got an infestation of chafer grubs. Over the next few videos I'm going to put together, I'm going to show you how to identify chafer grubs so you can recognise the initial symptoms that your lawn might have an infestation. I'll also take you through step by step as to how to repair the damage caused. The damage caused by chafer grubs can be extensive, as you can see behind me. Chafer grubs are the soil dwelling larvae of the chafer beetle and they're most common in lawns from autumn through to springtime. If not caught quickly, the devastation that they can cause is pretty intense, resulting in time consuming and often expensive repair work. There's no real reason as to why the chafer beetle might pick your lawn to lay its larvae. It's just down to nature and also down to a bit of bad luck. There's a number of initial signs which might suggest that your lawn's got an infestation of chafer grubs. One of the things might be you might see a sudden interest from, from birds, from squirrels, even badgers, wildlife basically just taking an, air, taking an interest in that area. Quite quickly, the grass will start, will, will turn from being a nice green color to being very dry in appearance, like a straw colored grass. When you notice this, what you want to do is just go to that area, give it a slight tug. If you've got an infestation, it'll be, it'll be apparent quite quickly. Just by pulling up that grass, it won't be rooted. So it's just like almost wafting like a blanket. Um, there's no resistance at all. Before any repair work takes place, it's important that you get rid of any infestation which is, which is in the soil at the moment. There's a number of ways of doing that. You can apply pesticides, you can pull back the grass to make them more available to wildlife, i.e. birds, um, squirrels, badgers, even foxes. And it also depends on the time of year as well. At the moment, the chafer grubs that we've got in this situation are too big for any pesticide to be effective. Likewise, there's things like nematodes that you can use. Because the ground temperature is starting to cool down, because nematodes are a live product, they won't be as effective as they would be if we, if we apply them later on in the year. So what we're going to do in this situation is pull back and remove as much of the damaged grass as we possibly can. And we're going to take it back to where the grass feels rooted again. This will expose the chafer grubs. I don't know if you can see there's birds flying behind me now. It'll just make them more available for the birds. If the birds don't get them, the temperature's that cool that they'll bury down further into the soil. To repair this damage, there's going to be a sequence of events. Each one I'm going to video and take you through a step-by-step -step process. First off, we're going to remove the damaged soil, the, the damaged grass. The next one will be to scarify the entire lawn. We'll then come back to re-level it using a, a top quality topsoil. And then the last process will then to, will be to seed or to turf. This is what the chafer grub looks like. It's, in the sh it's a bit like a maggot in the shape of a C. It's got a brown head and either side of the head there's three legs, six legs in total. And when the chafer beetle lays the larvae, it will sweep across the entire lawn, just eating the roots. These chafer grubs are quite large. Anything over an eighth of an inch, the grub's too big for any pesticide to take effect. I've pulled back some of the grass just to see how extensive the damage is, and it's quite severe. As I mentioned earlier, when you lift the grass, there'll be no resistance at all. You can see, just like that, it's just like wafting a blanket. You can also see along the edges, this straw colour, that grass is dead. There's no roots. The chafer grubs basically started and they're working their way across. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is remove all of the damaged grass. I'm going to pull it back as far as I possibly can until it feels rooted again. I'll then go round and try and make it as, as neat as I can. Um, at this stage, it's just the damaged grass that we want to get rid of. It will also expose the chafer grubs which are currently underneath. 
given a nice easy meal for the birds and, and wildlife to have or allow them to get too cold where they'll go deeper into the soil. Okay, so I'm going to pull the grass back. I'm going to pull it back as far as I can. As you can see, there's just so much coming up. And all this sod will be taken and cleared away off site. Okay, so what we've done is we've pulled back and removed all the damaged grass. And as you can see, the extent of the damage is quite severe. What we've done, we've pulled it back as far as we possibly can until it feels rooted again. We've then gone back a little bit further and cut it off. Hopefully, the chafer grubs haven't exceeded this area. There's a lot on the surface and one of two things will happen. Either the birds will come down and have a, a real good feast or they'll get that cold that they'll go lower down into the soil We'll then be able to deal with them later on in the year. Hi, I'm Tom from Lawn Science. We're back on a lawn that last year had a real bad infestation of chafer grubs. What we're going to do is repair the damage that was, that was caused last year. The first process we're going to do is firstly to scarify it. We're going to scarify the entire lawn and it'll be quite a hard, heavy scarification. We've also got a load of topsoil coming, which we're going to level this area before seeding. Last year when the lawn had the problem with the chafer grubs, it was too cold to repair it at the time. It was too cold so seed wouldn't germinate. What we've done is we've exposed the area and we've taken it back as far as we could. So the areas around the outside, they're still well rooted. After we've scarified, because there's quite a significant dip, that's why we're bringing in the, the new topsoil. It will then be leveled, we'll then tamper it down again and then we'll seed it. As you can see, since exposing the soil, we've had a number of weeds and also clumps of, of grass come through as well. At this stage, I'm not worried about that. I want to level it, want to seed it, and once we've got a nice germination, then we'll deal with the weeds. The other thing that we're also going to do to the lawn is offer a program which will deal with any chafer grubs if they've gone deeper down into the soil. This will be a process because of the, the lifespan of, of the chafer grubs. It can go over a number of years. So it, literally over the next two to three years, we'll be treating this lawn quite regularly for potential further infestations of chafer grubs. Also leather jackets as well. The first job to repair this damaged area is to scarify. Scarification will do a number of things. First off, it will remove a lot of the debris, a lot of the thatch and moss that has built up over the years in the existing grass. But also, if I just seeded this area, potentially what can happen is you can see a difference in the new germination to the existing grass. As I mentioned, it's going to be quite a heavy scarification. The reason for this is it will allow the seed to germinate quicker, but you'll also get a more even blend throughout the lawn. As you can see, after the first pass with the scarifier, a lot of thatch and a lot of moss has come out. What I'll do is I'll rake and I'll clear it, and if I need to go over it again with the scarifier, then I will. Okay, so I've scarified the lawn, and because it was so dense, I had to go over it a number of times. There was a lot that came out, but it's good because it's given us a good base for when the seed goes down. The next stage is to concentrate on repairing this damaged area. What we'll do is we'll bring in the topsoil, we'll put it down bit by bit, 
level it and compact it down again. If we don't compact it over a period of time, it will settle and you'll get dips. It's important to spend a bit of time doing this because sorting it out well from the beginning, that will reduce the amount that it will move in the future. So now that we've scarified and we've removed all the thatch and, and moss that came out of it, it's now time to repair the damaged area. What we're using is a good quality topsoil. I've brought some in and I've started to level it just by eye at this stage. The next process is to build it up bit by bit. There was a bit of a, a difference in level between the established grass and where we have removed all the old damaged grass um, that needs to be built up. I've leveled it as best I can. The next process is to go over it and literally compact it down. I'm just using my own body weight to do that. I don't want to use a roller, the reason being is because it would be easy to over compact it. Also at this stage it's important to do as best job as you can because the better this is done the less chance it's going to move in the future but also once the seed is established, once the seed is grown it'll be a lot easier to mow and you'll get a better overall uh, picture of the lawn. Once I've done this all over or in, in small sections It'll obviously need filling up, so it'll need patching in as I go. Once I've gone over the entire area and tampered it down, it will soon become apparent which areas need to be built up. It can be a long, quite a long drawn out process. What I'll do is I'll, I'll go over it, tamper it down, build the areas up, also the raised areas, I'll, I'll level those back out again. And I'll just keep going over it. It might take two attempts, it might take 22 attempts. But I'll go over, get it as level as I possibly, possibly can. Once it's been compacted, we'll then start seeding. Now that we've spent the time bringing the topsoil in, tampering it down and levelling it, I'm pleased with how it looks. One thing to bear in mind is when you're repairing areas like this, you'll use a lot more topsoil than you think. This area is about 40 square metres and in places only had a depth of about 4 centimetres. We used just over 2 tonne of topsoil, so you'll be surprised how much you use. On the internet, there are different calculators that you can use which will give you an idea how much to order. Now that this has been done, the next stage is to seed. We're going to use a shade tolerant seed. A shade tolerant seed will just be more uh, durable throughout long periods of drought weather, but also if we have, like last year, if we have periods of, of really wet weather as well. It's also more resistant to things like pest damage and disease and it's just a, a good all-round quality seed. Once I've seeded the entire lawn, I'll then go over it and rake it in slightly. After that, it's then important that it's kept well watered, that traffic's kept to a minimum, and you're not even thinking about mowing it at this stage. If you can stick to those three things, you should start to see germination at this time of year in about two to three weeks. Okay, so that's all done now. The customer's come out and he's happy with it as well. He's happy with the levelling that we've done. What we'll do now is not a lot. For the next sort of three to four weeks, I've explained to the customer that it's important that the seed's kept damp, also to keep off it and not to mow it. I'll pop back in a couple of weeks' time just to have a look, just to make sure that it's germinating as it should be. Once the seed's germinated and once it's been given its, its first cut, that's when we'll start looking at, at regular weeding, regular feeding, and we'll also put this customer on a, on a program where we'll deal with a regular pesticide treatment as well. So hopefully in the future he won't have a, an issue with chafer grubs like he did last year. Hello, I'm Steve Haywood and I live in Buckingham. This time last year my lawn began to deteriorate. I couldn't think why, but it was turning a ghastly brown. As time went on, and 
autumn was approaching, it got worse. And I realized I had a big problem. I started to lift up the turf and the whole lawn came away and underneath there were hundreds of thousands of chafer grubs. I realized I had a very, very serious problem. There was only one man I could turn to, a guy who I'd been using for the last seven years. That was Terry of Lawn Science. The Lawn Science team came over and they pointed out that I had a very serious problem, a very expensive problem. It needed a great deal of work. The entire, most, well in fact most of the lawn was absolutely ruined by these chafer grubs. And it was going to be a long process to repair this lawn. It wasn't going to be days, it wasn't going to be weeks, it was going to be months. And to me, I was really horrified. But at the end of the day, I realized I had a good team to support me using lawn science. Now I look at the job, which is now complete. After many, many months, I realize that the way forward is not to penny pinch, but to have this treated on an annual basis. No matter what the cost, it is far easier to have this treated instead of penny pinching because at least I know that I'm safe in the hands of lone science.